Hey guys and welcome to Fez Air Software. Today we're going to disassemble the CM009 or M16VN. So I just want to make a, a note on safety, whether I'm uh, disassembling, unboxing, chronoing, whatever it is I'm doing, I may always make sure I'm in a completely safe environment. So that means most of my videos, um, I'm always wearing eye protection uh, just to make sure that my eyesight stays safe, stays safe. Before I do that, I always make sure that there's no ammunition in uh, any of the mags or in the gun itself. I make sure that the mags are unloaded and unwound to make sure that nothing can happen with that. Obviously, if I'm chrono in, then I've absolutely definitely got my eye protection on to protect myself. I even make sure that my batteries are removed and out of the way so that I know I'm in the safe environment. I also make sure that there's nobody else around as well either, so I'm always in a safest possible environment. If you are working with airsoft stuff, please make sure you do the same. Hi guys and welcome back. If you do enjoy this content today, please do like and subscribe because you'll be really helping me out. So today we've got the CM009, which you will have seen unboxed earlier in the week, and I have put a link below to that unboxing. And today we're gonna do the disassembly of this and have a good look at what the internals are like on it. So obviously, first of all, Make sure there's no battery in, drop the mag out. So you've got your little tiny 150 round high cap. And the first thing we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at the uh, muzzle brake, excuse me, which is just on a tiny little grub screw here. So hopefully I've got a small enough bit to do it. There we go. So we're just gonna remove that. And it comes off. Yeah, just checking, it is a negative thread. And there it is with a rubber O-ring underneath just to keep it secure and tight down there. So I'll put that back on loosely for now. Position that up, there we go. So the next thing then we've got is this front sight uh, post. So you've got two pins in here that just need knocking out. And there's a little grub screw underneath here. So you'll have to knock this C pin out here to remove that. And then you can get to the grub screw and this front sight post should come off quite easily. Um, what you will need to do first of all though is pull back on the delta ring. Now what I found is with this handguard is it is quite well stuck together. It's, you know, it's really quite, firm they've done a good job of manufacturing that together so you pull back the delta ring release those out and then you've got access to obviously the whole inner barrel uh, the outer barrel system there uh, and once you've removed the front sight post and the gas tube you can uh, obviously then use something like an amorous wrench to undo this barrel nut to take off all of the front end there so it's nice and easy next thing we'll do we'll look at the stock and getting in the stock So from the unboxing, just like the unboxing, we've got a single flathead screw there, which is relatively long. And unfortunately this needs to be done as part of the uh, battery change, which you're not gonna be making midway through a firefight. So pull it out a little bit and it comes up and out. Now you've got a little Phillips head screw here. If you undo this Phillips head screw, it'll release the rear sling point, but that's all that's for. Just gonna pull the wiring out of the way and we've got all the way down in the top there a Phillips head screw so here's my screwdriver got my long screwdriver get that in there and there we go it's clicking now so should be able to smoothly and easily and there is evidence that we have got a quick change spring system in here we'll look at that in a second so if you look down there you should be able to see that there is oh that's actually movable as well that is you can see that's a removable piece I'll tip that out uh, so that's a blast plastic block uh, so you got the little runners there that sit hopefully you can see the little pegs in there so these pegs here so this screw here 
screws into the back of the sort of body and the gearbox uh, and this hole here is for the actual stock screw it's wet as well so it sits sort of like that i'm guessing it's possibly angled up slightly to match where the uh, hole is at the back of the stock so those are those all dealt with uh, we've obviously got our wiring coming out the back so we've got here that does match the allen key hole that was in the box so the allen key that's included in the box there's your uh, spacer there for your stock that is a metal spacer yeah that's a metal stock spacer which just helps to centralize and, and steady it up a little bit so we're going to undo this spring system now i'm going to use a larger flathead so it should just be unscrew on this bit there's some big thick chunky threads on there and there is a rub, rubber o-ring at the end there just to help keep it secure in Ooh, there it is it's come out so it's not a quick release as such so it isn't pushing and twist out it actually unscrews out but there is a full metal spring guide with bearing at the bottom which is good to keep the spring healthy there's our spring and it is i don't know if you can tell that properly but it tapers in slightly at the end and it's quite a neat fit it sort of fits quite snugly over there so it's not easily going to wiggle off the front by contrast is not tapered at all it does look like a standard spring that's a, a pretty much a regular linear spring next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to push the front body pin out i'm going to split the upper and lower the pin stays locked in that's nice i do like it when they do that and i'm just going to pull on the charging handle a little bit and make sure i lift up the dust cover I can get hold of it, there we go. And where right, you're releasing. There we go. Ah. So I was having trouble then because the uh, lever that locks open the ejection port was in the way. So I just pushed in the bolt release to bring that lever out of the way and it released the upper from coming out then. So we'll have a look at the barrel and hop unit. So you've got a pretty long barrel. It is the standard one, but it is spotlessly clean down there. Now that's the hop setting for a 0.25. We'll have a look how far that's fully on there was barely an adjustment left in there so that's a fully on hop unit uh, fully engaged so um, if you're going to shoot anything heavy i would assume that i'll probably lift a heavier slightly heavier bb uh, but obviously fully off there is not fully off there is a tiny tiny little bit of hop still in there um but it's your general typical SEMA quality it's looking nice and solid uh, the fact that the barrel's clean is nice I would probably still clean it anyway, as I would advise with any gun of any brand out of the box, brand new, uh, it's worth cleaning it. If you want to remove uh, the sight here, you've got a screw which you can undo the screw, and this front sight system will come out. Uh, to remove the dust cover, you've got a C clip, although if you've removed the delta ring, you don't need to undo the C clip at all. This bar will just slide out, but the little spring there is for compression. Um, the charging handle assembly is a bog standard normal traditional style and you've got a dust cover plate oh that's a little bit different so they've got an extra spring in here that links onto the dust uh, the ejection port cover so that basically always make sure that it retains now i don't know if you can tell properly or not but there's some blue grease in there i'm guessing that's to help it run smoothly and not get sort of damaged and that's just to keep it moving nicely but it does go back really really nicely obviously this little spring will help once you've got it locked open with the bolt release to uh, return it as well. So that's the upper dealt with. We'll uh, get down into the lower now. We'll take the pistol grip off first. I'm just gonna click that in. So we're gonna need a Phillips. One. So there's the bottom of our wiring onto the motor. So your red terminal is at the front and it comes, it's wired traditionally like a traditional AR style airsoft. So the wires come up the back, the red comes round and over to the front left, or front uh, right if you the other way around, and the black comes up this side and goes over 
to that terminal there. So I'll lift that out. That is the same sort of high speed motor we've been seeing uh, in the premium edition and things now. Definitely a good thing that they're up uprating the motors a little bit. We've got two screws. We've got in this one, we've got top right and bottom left. Although it does look like there is four mounting holes in the pistol grip and the gearbox. So you could put four screws in if you so chose. They are really firmly in there. Seem as uh, construction assembly lines getting a little bit better, I think, at assembling these. When you do the pistol grip and reinserting the motor, the red wire comes up the back of the pistol grip. The black wire comes in at the front of the pistol grip by the trigger. So the black wire comes up at the front here. It then curls round to the back, which you should be able to see um, in your own. It's kind of hard to show it properly here. Um, so you need to curl it round. Make sure that the motor goes in with the red terminal at the front. I'll drop that in. There we go. The black terminal goes on like that. The red terminal goes over like that. And then your base plate can go on, making sure that you get the wires out of it anywhere that might crimp it and lock screws back in like that. There we go. So we've got the um, got the bolt release to release. In fact, the pins come out from that already. And then we've got the uh, mag release, this trigger pin, and the back body pin to sort out. So we're going to need a little Torx to get in there. So I'm using a Torx six for that. Well, that's a Torx 6. Let's go in. Uh, with this, it should just wiggle itself out. So what I did there is I've pushed down on the little connector here just to release the thing out and it just slides out. Now there should be a pin in there. I dare say it's possibly dropped out in the, uh, in the box. Uh, but that pin there would sit in there and it should be a pin with a little rubber o-ring on it and it just comes out but that stays in there quite securely on its own so we're just going to push down on the little latch and that releases that out of the way next thing i'm going to look for the teeth and it looks like i'd say the teeth of this side on this one and this pin's going to push out the other way so let's push that one out first Uh, a few people are asking about this this pin in particular I always find this one comes out easier if all the other pins are out first and that one seems to come out much much easier then so I'm just going to push this one out it's still going to need a knock I was right so on this occasion the teeth are on the left hand side there come in so when I put it back in I'll have to put it in from the selector side with the teeth out like that and now we can get the gearbox out, possibly with this plastic clip on it. So I finally got it out in the end, took a little bit. Um, so what I needed to do was that clip was sat on the back of the gearbox, like that. And I got that far enough forward and moved it forward so I could literally just unclip that. That freed it up. Then what I realised is, as I was moving the gearbox, this back pin was moving a little bit. So when I, the minute that I pulled tighter on this to pull it out as far as possible, and you can see here the marking, it instantly just released it then after that, so I was into the gearbox quite happily. Uh, so what we'll do now is we'll have a look in the gearbox uh, once I've moved down the camera. So now we're down to this size. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this little plate. So just to notice this is how the spring goes around this little pin and then into the underside 
of this uh, bracket here that keeps the uh, ejection port open. So I'm just going to need a small Phillips. I'm going to brace it down with my thumb so that it doesn't just suddenly ping away and I lose it. So lift those up and out of the way. Right, now we're free to get into all of these screws to open up this gearbox. Please make sure that you keep your screws in the right order so you know where they come from. So we've now taken all but one screw out. We're just going to remove this one. So this is similar to what we've seen a lot recently in SEMA where they've uh, put a little screw into the safety lever there. So I'm just going to remove that and keep that so I know where it is. And then I can now safely pop this open. I know there's no spring because we removed it. Go the uh, there we go. The cylinder head was stuck into the top of the gearbox. So, first thing, there is a lot of blue stuff in there, which is uh, a good thing. Obviously, the blue plastic stuff is generally reinforced. They've obviously used a lot of the blue grease, which is quite normal and traditional for them. So, the first thing we'll have a look at is the gear set. Looks fairly standard, maybe a little bit up-branded. Obviously, they started putting CM on it. The gearbox looks a little bit nicer cast now as well. Um, this is obviously all good signs for us as players. There goes the trigger. Typical uh, F16 uh, M4 AR style trigger. It is micro-switch controlled there. Uh, hmm. I'm guessing that's possibly some sort of sensor down here down here to detect it does look like it's sort of like an optical sensor maybe to detect when the cutoff lever is touched that's quite uh, it does look different by the looks of it to the other MOSFETs that we've seen in the 97B which possibly I was right with the jingle being different maybe this is an uprated version of it so what we'll do first is we'll have a look at the underside of that in a minute uh, but we'll just check out the quality of the air seal and stuff uh, we've got the anodized blue cylinder in, in there, cylinder head even, and a blue plastic air nozzle and tap it. So let's have a look. That is a full metal uh, teeth piston, which is quite nice. So air compression. Ooh, some really good compression in there. That's as... I'm getting it barely halfway. So that is some good compression in there. You've got the... Blue uprated piston head in there as well. That looks quite nice. So let's see what the compression is like with the air nozzle on. Well, it's not obviously perfect seal. There is some there. If you can hear that, you can hear that it's struggling to get the air out. So it's definitely got some good compression. That's probably one of the best compressions we've seen. That's really nice. I'm, I'm really, really happy with that. Gear set looks fairly standard and normal. A lot of people have asked about uh, cutoff levers and things. So this is just one example. So what you're looking is, uh, sometimes they sit on this side. Sometimes, uh, like KWAs, have them sat on this side. And you're looking that the spring should be pulling it or pushing it, depending on the orientation, into the way of this gear. So you've got these little pegs. These ones here where you can see the line here in it. Bring that up to the camera. There we go. This line here. So the the anti-reversal latch sits against these there we go against these ledges here so as it spins it clicks and clicks and clicks so you want to make sure so in this case the spring should be pulling it like that and the gear as it spins stops it getting turned backwards so at the minute those gears will turn reverse that's the reverse if i put this in place and it is tricky, there we go. You should now hear it click. So that's the normal way. You can see it click in place. And when I try to go backwards, I can't go backwards and I'm trying to spin it backwards because that anti-reversal latch stops it. And that can cause issues if you don't have that stopped. So just lift those out. Shimming looks okay. Uh, metal bushings uh, will stand up to a lot of pressure and abuse. There we go. And what I'll do is I'll undo this screw here and just lift the circuit board out and see what we can uh, notice or see underneath. If 
I can carefully, yeah, so it's just a one screw. I am convinced that that is, let me get that, that there. Turn it over properly. Just in front of the orange bit there. I am convinced that's an optical sensor that's watching the cutoff because there's no way for that cutoff to actually do anything else. Underneath. Is that... I'm not sure what's going off under there. Let's have a look. Maybe it's magnetic that's detecting that this is coming into the way. Otherwise, how else would it know what firing mode to change to? Uh, but there is a look at the underside. That's definitely changed from the original um, MOSFET-based Platinum Editions that we've had. And that, to me, looks to be better quality, better built, um, probably a bit better thought out. Um, I would like to see them, because I think it'd be really nice for us as users, I would like to see them do a programmable version. I think if they could offer it with a programmable version to just, you know, the basic features, just sort of a little bit of um, maybe uh, three-shot burst enableable or something along those lines, I think people would be very, very happy um, because... Let's face it, if you're going to put a MOSFET in, a lot of people want the MOSFET purely because they can put in, uh, they can have three shot bursts. So I'm just going to get this safety back on. I'll leave that for now, do it uh, separately. But that in general maybe needs a little bit of a clean and re-grease with some, uh, some better quality greasing, but will definitely run quite happily for now. Um, in general, that is solidly looking built. Uh, it's really good. The compression is really good. It's possibly one of the best built SEMA gearboxes I've ever actually seen. Uh, that's definitely, to me, that looks like an upgraded um, MOSFET where they're, they're starting to up the game a lot now. Um, and, and that's impressive. You know, the, these things, especially for their price, are becoming real challenges to a lot of other big brands. So I hope that's been helpful to you. Please do remember to like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.